Hi, I'm Andy Allador, and in today's video lesson, I'm going to be talking about the great Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath, and I'll be showing you how to play two Sabbath classics, War Pigs, which is transcribed in this issue, and Fairies Wear Boots. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Tony's gear first. Uh, he's known for playing an SG, Gibson SG, and in the early days, he played a Gibson SG, and nowadays there's a Tony Iommi, Iommi custom Gibson SG. But uh, very early on, he started to have custom-made SGs uh, made uh, by Patrick Egel and uh, JD. And Tony's also uh, a lefty. And as many of you know, he had an accident when he was younger where he cut off the tips of two of his fingers. Uh, and he made fingertips, plastic fingertips himself. So it uh, definitely is an indication of his great drive to become a good guitar player to overcome an obstacle like that. One of the things he had to do, though, to deal with having that problem was he used extremely light gauge strings, which made it easier for him to play. So for the early Sabbath records, when he was tuned in to standard pitch, uh, going from high to low, he used an 8 and then another 8 for the B, which is very unusual, an 11 for the G, uh, 18 wound for the D, 24 for the A, 32 for the low E. That's extremely light. And then in later years, when he started to tune down, he, uh, when he tuned down a step and a half to C sharp, he went up a little bit to 9, 10, 12, uh, 20 wound, 32, 42. Uh, these two songs are played at concert pitch, standard tuning, um, and I have this guitar set up with nines. Another thing is the amplification. Uh, Tony was known for using Laney 100 watt amplifiers. And so a big part of that classic Sabbath sound came from the use of the SGs and those light gaze strings and his Laney 100 watt amps. All right, let's start with the War Pigs intro. It's very slow and it's played in a 12 8 time signature. And I'm going to have the click set to uh, eighth note triplets. So click, 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 click. Click, 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 like that. It's a very slow beat. And Tony just moves back and forth between E5 and sometimes D5 power chords are just a D note. Here is the intro. So I begin with these root fifth power chords on the fifth and fourth strings, flying from D5 up to E5, and that's played along with the open low E. And just allow it to ring, and then slide up one more time at the end of the bar. So you've got one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. So when you're into beat four is when you're gonna slide up one more time from D5 to E5. And there's been some conjecture about where Tony plays this on the guitar. You can see in the early videos him playing it down in this part of the neck. So one more time, the D5 chord with the open E in there and you slide up. And then slide up with just the two notes. And then we slide back. 7th to 5th fret and vibrato. And then at the end of bar 2, he's going to slide up to that major 3rd, 11th fret of the A string. So when we do this, that's the beginning of bar 2. 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1. So same thing on beat four comes in on the second eighth note. 
four. Then you hold that. B four. And that's bar four now. Same deal with sliding back seven to five. And now at the end of bar four. So he changes it a little bit. We're going to slide up like we had to the 11th fret of the A string with the open E. And then hammer 11, 12. Now we're going to slide up to an E5 power chord in 12 position. So now we're alternating between sliding from the 10th to the 12th fret for E, D to E5 power chord. And then sliding from E5 to D5. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. So you can see you wait. All right, at this point in the intro, the song switches to a faster tempo, and I have the drum machine set to quarter notes, and it's uh, quarter note equals 86. One, two, three, four, and this is where Tony is just playing the two power chords. Two, three, four, one, two, three, and you can hear Bill Ward playing eighth notes on the hi-hats, like that through that section. That carries us into the verse. So as I said, on that intro part, that's where the tempo changed uh, to a faster beat. And we're just going E5 to D5. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that continues through the verses. And Tony's going to play that um, twice. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's a four bar figure that happens twice. Those are the first eight bars of the verse. We get to bar nine of the verse uh, on the words uh, in the fields of bodies burning. Two, three, four, one, two, three. So he plays this little pull off list. And you can pull off additionally at the end there. So I'm going four, two, open on the G string. You could also play it as a bend and release and pull up. And then you have to get back up to the 10th and 12th fret. So at this point here, bar 19, two, three, four, bar 20, one, two. We're gonna do a quick trill from the 10th to the 12th fret. And then play the power chords again. And now in bar 22, one, two, three. So that's just barring across the top three strings at the 12th fret, gliding down and back to the... And that's the end of the verse, and that brings us to the next section, the next main lick in the tune. All right, at the close of the verse section, we have sort of the chorus section uh, where the riff changes, and it's just all power chords played high up on the neck, sliding between different power chords, and here you can... Uh, See Tony Iommi using chromaticism sliding down between power chords 
which in time would become a staple of heavy metal guitar riffs. Here we go. <laughs> So on beat one, I'm just moving quickly from D5 to E5 and sliding down. Two, three. So on beat four, we're going from G5, 15th fret, to F sharp 5, 14th fret. And then on beat one of the next bar, F5, 13th fret, back to the E5. So it's all very simple. Two note power chords on the bottom two strings. Two, three. And then he does a quick vibrato, 12th fret of the G string. Then you repeat. And then you just do, do a quick trill. 12th fret of the D string to 14th fret. Same as before. start with those 16th notes that are palm muted on the open low E string. And then we're going to pull off 2nd fret open on the D string. And then we have these three open low E's all palm muted, all on upbeats. And because they're upbeats, I do them all as upstrokes. Then you go back to the pull off. And then it ends with this little second fret band of a half step and release. That's played eight times and then it goes back to the earlier lick. And after that second verse section, it goes back to that chorus riff that we played before, those sliding power chords on the bottom two strings. So you play that part, and that brings us into the guitar solo. So let's take a look at the first part of the guitar solo right now. So right here, Tony's sliding on the A string, and he's playing in the E mixolydian mode. So those are the notes. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D. And it's just, the, he's getting the contrast of the major third against the heavy minor sound of the tune. So we're going to start, and it's all in 16th notes. The beats like this. One E and a two E and a. Those are sixteenths. But you can allow that open low E to ring through the riff. And now here in bar three. One more time. And 
and then so we wrap up bar three of the solo. And then that's going to take us to the next uh, section of the solo. All right, we're in E minor pentatonic in 12th position, and we begin. So the 16th note triplets bending the 14th fret of the G string up a whole step and then barring across the top two. And he actually started it in the bar before, so if you counted the bar before, you'd have one, two, three, four. So it turns into three of them. One, two, three, four. So, again, starting from bar 61. So after the, you're gonna bend 15th fret of the B string up a whole step in vibrato. So, B3, the B4, And then in the next bar, bar 62, he's going to do this repeated. So we're pulling off 15, 12, 14 on the G. Like that. And then so right now, starting in bar 63, we're going to start 15th fret, band up, all step twice on beat one, and then beat two. So it's just sort of repeated that similar shape. And then in bar 64. So we're going to pull off 15, 12, slow bend and release. It's actually a pull off. So one more time. So 14, 12, 14, 14 on the A. So that's 10, 12, 10. And then we're gonna go back 12, 14 on the D string. All right, next up is Fairies Wear Boots. This is an interesting tune. It starts off with a series of different themes and they progress up in whole steps. You start in G and then we go to A and then we go to B and then we go to C sharp for a little solo. Uh, and then there's some power chords and it's all kind of in the slow tempo. And then all of a sudden the song shifts to a 12-8 shuffle. And that's sort of the, yeah, the verse section and the fairy wearer's boots section of the tune. So let's start with the first theme, and that's in G minor. So I'm holding this G7 shape, similar to that last lick in War Pigs. So you're going to pick the notes individually, starting from the low string and moving higher. And I'm palm muting also to get some separation between the notes. So one more time. So my pinky comes in after, play that higher octave G. four times and 
the last time, instead of going, you go from the B flat to the G. And then the theme moves up a whole step to A. Let me play that for you now. And now we're in A minor, and it's sort of like uh, A Dorian or A Aeolian. So I start on that seventh fret of the D string, move to the fifth fret of the G, and pull off to the fourth. And then I'm going to pull off seven five on the D to seven on the A. And then these two hammers. And you can use index and ring if you like. I like using my pinky because once I'm in this position, it just seems more comfortable. And then third time, so you're going to start with that five, seven, five. And then he repeats the last part, and then moves up to B, and then the next lick that's played over B. So this riff's all based on octaves played on the D string and the B string. And I'm going to slide up from B, ninth, index finger 9th fret to index finger 12th fret. That's it. A D octave. And then we're going to slide up to 16 and 19. So we went from 9 to 12 to 14, back to 9, back to 7. And the notes are picked individually. So after picking and sliding on the D, you pick the B. So one more time from the beginning. then it's going to end. So that's just talking about the index finger 9, 12, 14, 16, 14. The next thing that comes up is a power chord riff, these band accents with drum fills in between, where you're going to go from E5 to D5, then B5 to A5. That happens twice, and then they're going to go up chromatically from B5 to C sharp 5, and then Tony plays a little solo in C-sharp. So here's that chordal riff that connects that last riff to the intro solo. So after Tony plays that intro solo in C sharp, he goes back to those chordal accents of the just like the band did, and then there's a drum fill, and at 115 the song completely shifts gears into this medium tempo 12-8 shuffle, as I was saying, sort of, you can hear the Jethro Tull influence there, and the main lick in the tune over 12-8, I'm going to show that to you right now. Uh, this is kind of interesting because we're going to go from G5 to B flat 5, 3 5, 6 8, 
back to 3-5. And then he just bars across third fret of the A and D, and that's sort of like a F5, but just the top part of it. But what's interesting is Geezer Butler, the bass player, goes. So he's going to play those low notes and then play an octave. And over that octave is where Tony plays that. Second time, he plays an F. And that makes for a regular F5 bar chord. So it's just sort of interesting that Tony chooses to play the same thing though the bass player plays something different each time. All right, so that riff carries through the verse sections, and then there's really only one other riff uh, where Tony goes. into a guitar solo. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the music of Black Sabbath, two of their greatest hits, and the guitar playing of Tony Iommi. There's lots of great stuff to learn. I'm Andy Allidort. I'll see you next time.